Yep. What? Plain, ordinary investigation. You and I are taking her for a ride. Face to face with the witch. <laughs> Please don't make me go in there, please. Janetta, nobody's going to hurt you. Please, please, you put me in the cellar again. Oh, please. Yes, can I? Why, Janetta. You know this girl? Why, of course. My but... name is Cleve Bullett. I'm from the Tulsa Tribune. This is Detective Carey Newspaper from... Newspaper reporters and policemen? Janetta, you poor child. What have you done now? I think we better discuss this inside. Please, please, please. Come on, Janetta. Uh, well, ma'am? Of course, gentlemen. Do come in. I'll come right to the point, ma'am. Please do. Janetta here is a friend of mine. Uh, she has, uh, well, she's made some serious charges concerning Excuse you. Excuse me, Mr. Bullet. Oh, forgive me. I'm not good on names. May I interrupt for a moment? Well, yes. Thank you. Jeanetta, dear, won't you go to your room while I talk with the gentleman? Please, Mr. Bullet, please don't it's let me. It's all right, Jeanetta. You can go. You'll be all right. Do as the man says, Jeanetta. Close the door, dear. Waiting, ma'am. Oh, gentlemen, can't you see? See what, ma'am? Can't you see? The poor child is deranged. She has a persecution complex. Then why isn't she in an institution? Why is she so thin, so bruised, so shabby, so frightened? Tell me why. Dear Mr. Bellet, she is in an institution. This is a private nursing home, in a way. Her poor father didn't want to send her to, to the other place, so I'm taking care of her privately, you understand. Well, that doesn't explain her why. Her thinness and the other thing, can't you understand? She won't eat. She won't dress me. She won't realize all her fears are delusions. Her poor, sick mind can't distinguish between the real world and the dream world. That's all. It's as simple as all that. Just the terrible, haunting delusions of a poor, bewildered mind. Ma'am, I guess we owe you an apology. Oh, no, Mr. Gillard. I owe you thanks for bringing her home. I've been worried about her all day. And you did right in coming here. After all, there are so many people who take advantage of a poor lost soul. Aren't there? And that is that. And once again, you chase the poor bewildered girl out of your mind. But about a week later... Carrie turns up at your house in the middle of the night with a Boy Scout, no less. All right, Sonny. Tell Mr. Bullett just what you told me. Yes, sir. You see, I'm a tenderfoot. I gotta make second class. And one of the tests is I gotta camp out overnight. So I set up my pup tent in the empty lot down by my house. And I lit a fire. Go ahead. Go ahead. I sat up a while. Like there was nobody around but me. Me in the nighttime. And I thought I'd do a little spying around. Practicing the silent walk. Peeked over the wall next to the lot, like I was sneaking up on an Indian village. Look, kid, get to the point, will you? Yes, sir. Well, somebody was digging in the garden. At 2 a.m.? Fine. Yeah. I thought it was awful early to be digging in the garden, so I kept on spying. When I seen the... Saw. Yeah. Well, when I saw what they were doing, I came right to the police. And what were they doing? Having a funeral, kind of with a coffin and everything, and she was sort of weaving around and mumbling and stretching her arms out and all that. Golly, it was the weirdest darn thing now, ever wait did. a minute, Sonny. Uh, who was weaving around? She was. And who was... But who is she? The witch. Say that again. The witch. Everybody calls her the witch. Why? Why, oh, you know, she's the meanest old lady on the block. Why, when a ball goes over the wall and you go after it, she'll stick a bulldog on you. Because when Jeanetta's... There, Jeanetta. You know Janetta? Sure. She throws the ball back. She's nice. But she's not there anymore. She's not there anymore? No, sir. Since how long? About a week. Did I hear you say funeral? What do you mean, funeral? Well, she buried a coffin. A real coffin-looking coffin. With handles in it. Sonny? Yes, sir? How'd you like to have a ride in a real squad car with me and Detective Carey? Where to? 
The House of the Witch. Right here is where she was digging. Look, look, can, can I go home now? I'm kind of scared. Sure, Sonny. And you want to know a secret? So am I. Clave, hand this bag. Let's dig. do this part. You're the law? Yeah. Hold the flashlight. Sure, sure. No, uh, wait. Huh? If, uh, if this coffin holds what we think, I, uh, I, uh, it's on my conscience. I was the one who wouldn't believe her. I was the one who brought her back to this, this place. Yeah. Nothing you can do. It's nobody's fault. Ready? Go ahead. <sighs> you and me both. So that's what she was, what did the kid call it, weavering and mumbling over. A dead in Bondi, ribbon buried bulldog. Well. Well what? Well, a couple of wells. Well, we know there's something going on around here. But we know Jeanette is okay. Do we? Yeah. Do we? Are you coming with that lock? Any minute now. Little trick I learned from the second story, Matt. Ah. Go ahead. Yeah. Here's a switch. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, ma'am, uh, we can explain everything. You see, Wait. Uh, Can't you see? Her eyes are wide open. Yeah. Look at that. She's in a trance. Now we can really search this place. Oh, no, I'm not leaving her alone. How are you going to bring her out of it? I don't know. Sometimes this works. Pardon me, lady. Look. She's moving. Janetta. No. What have you done with her? What have you done to Janetta? Where is she? Who are you? What are you? It's the young gentleman from the paper. And the law. What are you doing in my house? This is an outrage, an absolute outrage. What right have you to invade my privacy like this? By what Lady, right? Lady, we ask the questions. Where's the girl? Where is Janetta? Asleep in bed. You... Well, I... She's perfectly all right. I... I'll go downstairs, downstairs right now. I'll watch you, Carrie. You go downstairs. Okay. I'll go with you. You stay here. Young man, I assure you this is a horrible mistake. A nightmare. Do I look like the kind of woman who would do the things you suspect? Just look at me. Look at me. My eyes. Look into my eyes. Deep. Deep. It's late. It's so very, very late. You must be very sleepy. So sleepy. Cleve. Cleve. Snap out of it. Huh? What? Why, oh, the old witch tried to hypnotize me. That's the secret, Carrie. That's the story. Just a cheap hypnotist. Not just a hypnotist, Cleve. Worse. Go down those stairs, Cleve. Here, take a flashlight. I'll stay here. Go down those stairs, see what you find. Is that a witch? 
Janetta. Janetta, don't be afraid. It's me. Please, please. It's all right, Janetta. It's going to be all right. Nobody's ever going to chain you up in the cellar again. Never. In just a moment, we'll read you a telegram from Cleve Bullett of the Tulsa Tribune with the final outcome of tonight's big story. America's leading cigarettes, only one is outstanding. Only one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package, Pall Mall. Good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. For Pall Mall's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke on the way to your throat. Gives you that smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Remember, Pell Mell famous cigarettes, outstanding. And they are mild. Now we read you that telegram from Cleve Bullett of the Tulsa Tribune. Mystery woman in tonight's big story, headlined as the mistress of Hex House, was convicted and sentenced to the Oklahoma State Penitentiary. Removed from her evil influence, Janetta soon was restored to normal life. Let me express my appreciation for tonight's Pell Mell Award. Thank you, Mr. Bullett. The makers of Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes are proud to have named you the winner of the Pell Mell $500 Award for notable service in the field of journalism. And now we present our guest of the evening, the editor of Movie Life magazine, Miss Betty Etter. Thank you, Mr. Chappell. In behalf of Movie Life magazine... I am proud to present this citation to Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes and to Bernard J. Proctor, producer of The Big Story, radio's outstanding dramatic program. This is the one radio program which so successfully employs the fast-moving documentary style that marks many film hits, such as A Call North Side 777, The Killers, Teen Man, and others. Congratulations. Thank you, Miss Ether. Listen again next week. Same time, same station, when Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes will present another big story. A big story from the front pages of the Charlotte, North Carolina News. Byline, C.A. Paul. A big story that reached its climax as a murderer hid in a swamp, surrounded by a mob gone mad with the heat. <laughs> The Big Story is produced by Bernard J. Proctor with music by Vladimir Selinsky. Tonight's program was written by Alan Sloan. Your narrator was Bob Sloan, and Jim Bowles played the part of George Cleveland Bullett. In order to protect the names of people actually involved in tonight's authentic Big Story, the names of all characters in the dramatization were changed, with the exception of the reporter, Mr. Bullett. This is Ernest Chappell speaking for the makers of Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.